So let's move on quickly to uh, having a custom payout. And here you can see that it's much more complex than uh, than the one bef before. Okay, much more lines. So we we need to uh, to go step by step and and check what it does. But basically, um, what what we can see is that uh, it's a momentum payout I've created here, uh, and again, it's using a features uh, a features um, uh, object uh, as a first argument, and this is when it becomes uh, quite important and quite uh, interesting. Uh, here, just uh, for uh, the sake of argument, I'm going to recreate a new data features that have all tickers. Remember, this uh, TKR was all tickers available uh, throughout the period. And I am going to load all the series, all the time series that are available for tickers. Okay. And uh, that's uh, open, high, low, close, and uh, BB Live. So if I do that, uh, I will end up having all tickers and all available fields. But uh, what's more interesting is that I can directly pass everything inside my payout here. Okay. And then let's dig into the payout. Here, the first block, what is that? I extract time series uh, that I want, basically. And this is the, the really the key point here we wanted to show about this data feature is that here, you can subset from the data feature uh, whatever field or ticker you want. This is what we showed uh, earlier on with the, with the insurance sector. You can subset something. So here, uh, I didn't load it, but I'm going to load it just to show you. So here, my data features is empty. I'm just going to load, uh, I'm going to load uh, all prices and then I'm going to do a subset. So what a subset does is I'm just going to look at um, the documentation, uh, which is not going to pop up because I'm running a cell. If I look at subset, it creates a subset of the data included in the data feature. Okay, so uh, that's just uh, the broad description of that method. If I scroll down, load subset. Here it is my method subset, uh, it uh, takes the data feature object and uh, it uh, basically turned it into a new data feature object with only the, the series you want. Okay, What can we pass it on? Tickers, fields, um, mainly. So let's start with this. You can see that there is also a zoom and a split uh, argument and as data feature, which is whether to return the subset as a new data feature object or as a data frame. Okay, so if it's uh, if this is false, then it's going to return a data frame. If it's true, it's going to return a data features object. So okay, from that uh, we are going to be able to take this data feature. It's taking some time to to load all data, but once you have loaded all data, so the whole the whole universe, basically. Then you don't need to uh, do you don't need to do it anymore, and you can manipulate a uh, series directly from uh, from the object. Um, this is exactly what we do here. We take the whole universe, and then we use only what we need, the subset. But the important point, and we are going to go down to that is that by passing the data feature as an argument then uh, you can uh, you don't have to uh, create many times uh, a new data feature it's already there and the data is already there so you can uh, you can uh, basically uh, manipulate uh, all series without having to call uh, data over and over again so it's going to make you save time uh, here I have my data uh, object and we said that there is a subset method subset that is uh, taking tickers field uh, or anything. So um, I'm just going to do field equal uh, open price. Uh, let's just check before that that the data feature is actually what we 
what we want so that it has all prices yeah it has all prices open price high price low price close price bb live for all all tickers okay that's uh, that's a big uh big data frame okay 300 and uh, 3300 something uh, columns and here I'm just taking the first five but uh, if we look at the whole shape uh, it's 2500 uh, rows as well so it's a big matrix uh, so that's exactly it now we can subset it and if I do this then I have a new uh, data feature object See, it was quite quick to subset. So you have a new data feature object. What does it have? Oh, you have all the tickers and for, for only the field that I've selected, open price. That's good. Um, does it work? Obviously, it's going to work with, uh, you know, if you, if you change it for high price, then uh, you have a high price. So see, now it's pretty quick to... Uh, to start getting uh, only the data you want. Uh, if you want, I don't know, uh, tickers, uh, the first uh, few uh, equities, let's say, and then um, this, uh, let's take Apple as well. Apple. Okay, I'm, so I'm just gonna have high, high price for that, so it's pretty quick. Now you have only the data you need but remember that all data is still in DF so there is no more database calls and I can manipulate uh, things quite quickly now so let's just get rid of that um, so go, going back to this my feature that I'm going to feed in I'm going to subset it only by BB Live because uh, I'm going to uh, compute a momentum and my momentum will be quite simple. It's just going to be the the, the rate of change uh, over 250 days. Okay, so is it a positive momentum? So do we have a, a positive return over the past year, or do we have a negative return over the past year? Uh, and because uh, I'm going to use the subset, you saw that it was pretty quick. So uh, this is going to create uh, my momentum indicator here. I'm taking. Uh, I'm, I'm going to to name the columns the same as the all the tickers that I have available, uh, and then again I'm using this get tickers function to get the inclusion matrix. Obviously, I want the inclusion matrix of all the tickers uh, that are in my feature because this is what I'm filling in. Um, and then um, what we're going to do is uh, this time around for this particular payout uh, we're just going to uh, try and rebalance every month okay so this is something you can also do with a data feature uh, let me show you that uh, it has a change frequency uh, parameter so if we go and recreate here our data feature one object and only take um, sorry only take one of the of the fields here let's say i want the low price uh, and that's the fields that i want so i have my new uh, df1 uh, which is having prices for only the subsetted part okay that's correct and now what i can do with that is basically um, change uh, the frequency and I want my frequency to be monthly Oop. that's giving me an end of month uh, basically uh, data point okay uh, you can do other ones if you want weekly on a Thursday so it's going to take every Thursday uh, of every week and just resample, resample that uh, to that date okay so that's uh, that's pretty handy. Obviously, if you don't know how it works, again, you can check the documentation. And here, uh, you just need a FREC or a custom FREC. And uh, it's going to change the data features, data frequency. Okay. 
So you need data feature object in order to be able to do that. If you don't know which frequencies are allowed, uh, you just read the, the doc string and it says uh, it's listed by this function. So if I just do that, I can see that uh, what's available is, let me just, let me just uh, get rid of that message. Okay, so you see that the available uh, frequencies that you can use are these, and here you have custom monthly, for example. Let's just take that and see what it does. Uh, hope. Where am I? Okay. Here we, we go, custom monthly, but I need, I need to, uh, uh, if, if I'm using custom, custom monthly, I need to uh, tell it which custom uh, frequency I want, I want to use. use. Uh, so so I, might I want to do it every other month. month. Obviously, Obviously, again, again look, look at the, the doc, doc screen, screen to know that, that there is a custom freq signature and that, that custom, custom freq is the number of for the custom, custom frequency. It only works when freq is custom daily or custom monthly. So do that. And then here, here I can see, see that, that uh, basically, basically every two months I have, uh, I have an index. So that's, that's going to help us uh, in, in, in our payout. Did it that here and the payout is uh, indeed uh, going to uh, to use uh, monthly frequency because here I'm just uh, changing the frequency to monthly and then I'm taking um, I'm taking the index. Of that, that, uh, of that of that new uh, matrix, matrix in order to define some rebalancing dates, and then I'm just looping through the looping through the dates. So, so here, what, what I'm going, going to do is basically, I have my rebalancing date. So at each rebalancing date, I am going to check uh, if uh, first if the stocks were in the in the S&P at that date, and also I am going to check. Uh, if uh, if the momentum here, um, what, what was the momentum at that date? Okay, so um, if the momentum is high, I'm going to decide it's a good momentum. It's a, it's a bond, it's a stock that I want to buy, and I'm going to select the top uh, momentum um, as ranked by sort value here. So all the momentum at that date is going to be sorted by uh, descending order. So what selection I'm going to do is defined here by select 50. I'm going to select the 50 here, the top 50 uh, momentum, uh, and then I'm taking the name, the name of uh, of those uh, of the stocks, and I am uh, putting a weight of one over 50 to them. Uh, here you see there is a try catch, uh, which is basically uh, some dates um, don't have any momentum values, so I need to skip that, and, and uh, I'll skip that here as well. And uh, and then we'll uh, we'll run the payout. So to test your payout, just take a look. Uh, my payout is called momentum momentum S and P select. Uh, it's ex expecting a data feature object. Uh, which we have defined here. So you can just call that function and test it to see what it returns. And our expectation is that it returns a matrix of weights, okay? And th th those weights will be uh, basically 2% uh, for the selected stocks and zero for the rest, okay? So from there, we can, again, uh, build a portfolio. And... Uh, See how how I, how I pass the data feature here. Uh, so uh, basically, the data feature is uh, defined outside from the from the portfolio. So each time you you are going to run that. So even if you change the parameters or anything, you're not reloading the data. The data is here. It's in in this uh, object. So that's very important. Uh, so if you go and run that. Then it's going to uh, evaluate your payout. 
and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll backtest it. But um, here I have kept uh, just the default parameter. If we go back up, uh, the momentum is, uh, is over 250 days and uh, we are allocating to 50 stocks. Okay. So this is not great. We're not doing better than the benchmark here. Uh, but now we can start and play with, uh, with our portfolio uh, without too much of a hassle because all our data is outside. So we don't have to uh, call them again and again. And uh, you can just decide to change parameters. So here, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to create another portfolio. Uh, which I'm going to call portfolio three, and um, here I'm going to change my momentum, uh, my momentum uh, parameter. So just as a reminder, when I declare my payout, I do payout, and then the first argument uh, is always the data argument. So either data frame or now you could see that you can fill in a data feature. And then uh, you pass in the rest of the arguments if, uh, if there are no defaults. So here my mo momentum was over 250 days backwards. Uh, so I'm just going to change it to something like three months. Uh, three months uh, is uh, 62 days, uh, 62 uh, working days, uh, weekdays. And, we can, and you can start playing with that uh, again and again so that uh, you're saving time by using um, the data feature. Uh, there is also something quite important uh, in the payout itself. I invite you to, to read it uh, more in detail. Uh, we're going to publish that. But here you can see my first thing is to extract the time series of interest. But I could w as well put uh, field uh, wanted with this here, refactor that and um, and now you have a new payout where you could very easily directly from uh, from this line here you could uh, now change easily uh, uh, field wanted equal, I don't know if you want to change and test what it does with open price, then you can change it directly here and you wouldn't have to, uh, to do anything else. So that's quite uh, important to have a, a modular and a flexible payout so that you can test many things. Uh, here we have changed the momentum to uh, three months backwards and see uh, what happens. Uh, it's slightly improving our, our performance, but it's still below the, the benchmark. Um, so. I'll let you uh, explore a bit more and, and see what you can do to fine tune and tweak uh, the strategy to make it better. My main message here is um, try to optimize the way you use uh, the data and try to uh, you know call as little as possible uh, get history data because otherwise it's going to take you some time. Uh, just try to create a data feature object and then from the data feature object, just push it into your payout. Uh, and then you, you're going to keep your RAM under control and you're going to be able to test uh, much more uh, versions of your payout more quickly. That's pretty much it for this notebook. Uh, obviously, if you have uh, remarks about it, uh, please let us know. I will uh, publish it uh, by the end of today on the public notebook part. So it's going to be appearing here in public notebooks so you can uh, you can go and, and check it out